Okay, shall we start again? Uh, today's our second speaker is uh, Professor Hyundu Park uh, at Kias. Uh, please welcome him. Thanks for the introduction. <coughs> and I know all your attendants uh, learn a lot about stochastic thermodynamics from uh, Professor Chai Song Lee last week. I think there are some new faces here, so maybe <laughs> didn't alone. Uh, he, he taught you from the very basics to the very recent uh, hot topics like TUR and speed limit. Uh, my talk is also about one example, using the stochastic thermodynamics to resolve the very <coughs> long-standing issue or controversial problem uh, uh, raised in the conventional thermodynamics. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm going to talk about heat engine. Even though the title looks horrible, it's very long and on saga, whatever, but it's a very simple problem. You know, the heat engine, what do you want to do with the heat engine? Usually, you want to uh, increase the performance, make a better performance. What is better? Better is power. You want to increase the power. Also, you want to increase the efficiency of the engine. So you have to, you, you want to increase both of the power and efficiency, but is it possible to do that? Is there any kind of trade of relation? If you increase the power, then you have you have to, you know, the, uh, sacrifice your efficiency or not. Those kind of questions. So I'm trying to answer <laughs> to this question in this talk. So starting from the uh, very basic heat engine, you can find in, in the freshman textbook, you have an engine, a two terminal lead, you have a two terminal two reservoirs connected to the engine hot reservoir and cold reservoir, and, and hot reservoir released some energy in the form of heat to the engine, and you can use part of this energy to the useful work, and remaining energy is gonna be dumped into the cold reservoir. That's the basic thing, what is going on in the cyclic engine or the steady state engine or whatever heat engine. Energetics is obvious, this is energy conservation. Coming in should be same as coming out. Uh, interesting thing is thermodynamics, because we know the all, we know all the thermodynamics second law must be satisfied. So you have to capture total entry production. But engine is in a cyclic state or the steady state. Engine does not have any contribution to the entropy increase. Only the two reservoirs. But this reservoir lose some energy, and this is in equilibrium always. So entropy change can be written in terms of Clausius form, which was found very long time ago in, by Clausius. So this guy, this, this reservoir lose some entropy. But this guy, because you have an energy in increase, so you increase your total entropy. So if you add up all this, there must be positive. This is second law. And one important thing is efficiency. Efficiency is something like how much you can do with some input energy. So W divided by the input energy. Put these things into here, these two equations, usually these two equations you can easily find. Efficiency has a high uh, upper bound which is called Carnot efficiency, given by the one minus uh, temperature difference. This is all in the freshman textbook in general physics. It's a little bit more useful to rewrite this equation in terms of Carnot efficiency and entry production and the work. So I, got rid, I get rid of this or heat energy terms, then you can easily find, you can rewrite the whole thing in this way. By looking at this, then you can easily see how to get to the Carnot efficiency. Ah, 
sorry, this is usually uh, uh, for the cyclic engine. For the steady state engine, you, you, instead of this guy, you can use the entry production rate and work rate. This is, work rate is basically power. Okay, you know, to reach the carbon efficiency, obviously this is zero if eta goes to eta c. In order to make that, what is the requirement, requirement for that is obviously only s star equals zero. If s star equals zero, then this is one. Uh, this is zero. This is usually not okay. Entry production rate is zero means you are usually you are thinking about the quasi static process, which we learn in, in uh, as a freshman. But this power W dot doesn't have to be zero. If, if it is zero, then sometimes it, it, it can cause more problems because zero divided by zero. So basically, some of second law does not prohibit finite power engine with carbon efficiency. It's, so you can have a finite power in principle. It's not banned by the thermodynamic cycle. No? This engine with carbon efficiency and a finite power, people usually call this a dream engine because it, people thought if you, if you have a current efficiency, then somehow you are thinking you cannot have a power. Then that's a useless engine because you have no power. But if, if you, uh, even if you have a maximum efficiency but with, with, with a finite power, then it's going to be a very useful engine. So this is a kind of dream. All, all the recent debates started from this paper by Benetti, Saito, and Kasati in PRL about 11 years ago. They really calculate the efficiency and power in the, in the framework of linear irreversible thermodynamics. Looks, uh, sounds terrible, but it's basically linear response theory. It's something like, so you have, a, again, hot or cold reservoir, and you have a channel, so then the energy can, you know, the flow from hot to cold. But if you also add the potential gradient, like the chemical potential gradient, then particle also move. If particle move, then you can, you can say you have some kind of work is coming out because you move something to from, from here to there. So you, you have a particle flux and you can have a heat flux in the, in the linear response regime, it must be linearly depend on the, this external force, external, people call this thermodynamic force, with some coefficient like that, okay? So of course, there is no gradient and there is no current. This is the equilibrium situation. But if there is a gradient, then there is a current. One of the amazing discovery by Onsaga, is so-called Onsaga reciprocal symmetry, is these off-diagonal elements are symmetric. They are same each other. Onsaga got the Nobel Prize in chem chemistry by this work. This is, I'm not gonna derive the whole these things here, but this Onsaga reciprocal symmetry is based, based on the time reversal symmetry in microscopic dynamics, if you follow his derivation. However, Casimir, the later, he found when you apply the magnetic field for the electronic system, the magnetic field obviously breaks the time reversal symmetry. So if you break the time reversal symmetry, then Onsaga symmetry doesn't have to be satisfied in general. However, he found interesting symmetry. If you change the magnetic field upside down, 
then you have uh, this kind of symmetry. So this B field is up, for example, this B field is down. So th these two e equality is, these coefficients are for the different system. One is magnetic field up, one is magnetic field down. Whatever he found interesting symmetry, uh, this symmetry, Onsaga symmetry is broken for, this, for a given system. Using knowing all these things, they tried to find from the this uh, linear response theory, they tried to find the efficiency and power and all, all kinds of stuff. And I'm not going to tell you the derivation, derivation is rather simple, but this is the result. This is a normalized efficiency, normalized against the current efficiency. Here is so called the asymmetric factor. A symmetry between the, these two off diagonal element. And forget about the, this red, red dashed line. I don't know how to get rid of these things because I got these things from the paper. This, this uh, blue line is the maximum efficiency you can get for a system with some S uh, in. Uh, with the system, we have some, uh, some asymmetry in general. And they found this flat line, along this flat line, obviously this is one, so this is current efficiency, and this flat line entry production rate is zero. But more importantly, they found along this line, power is given by this, as a function of S. So what, it, what this means? When S equal one, this line, this is usual micro, uh, microscopic time of symmetry, then this is the maximum point you can have. So current efficiency can be reached. But unfortunately, when S equal one, the power is zero. That's why we could not find anything uh, with current efficiency with finite power before. But their suggestion is if you break the time reversal symmetry, then you can go to this symmetric factor to not equal to one. Then this is maximum efficiency, still current efficiency, entry production rate is zero, but work is finite. So there is a way to get the dream engine. This publication triggers many, many further studies to find really the dream engine is possible or not. How can you make the dream engine explicitly? So they do the same calculations, for example, so-called two terminal transport problem, which is temperature and difference and chemical potential difference, electron transport in, in the classical uh, uh, limit, a magnetic field is on. Then following this theory, Onsega Casimir theory, this Onsega symmetry possibly broken there. But however, explicit calculations show this Onsega symmetry is not broken. This Onsega Casimir result does not, uh, does not disallow the symmetric coefficient. They only say these two guys are same. So for example, if coefficients is even function of B, then these two guys must be the same. So unfortunately, <coughs> sorry. unfortunately they could not find the asymmetric Onsaga uh, coefficient where you can find the dream, uh, dream engine like that. So they went for a little more complicated system, so-called three terminal transport. You have a two terminal, but you, you put the one terminal in between, so you can control another whatever parameter system parameters and try to find whether, and you have a magnetic field all, is all there, then on symmetry does not have to be uh, conserved. 
So they really found on Saga symmetry is broken. Is L is the matrix of this cohesion. So in these three terminal cases, L is three by three matrix. They found this. Wow, it's great. However, in, in this linear universal phenomenon formulation, entry product set equals zero is not allowed in their calculation. So this is good, but this is bad. So again, you cannot find the dimension at all. Right after that, inspired by the thermodynamic uncertainty relation, which you learned last week for, I think, more than two hours from Professor Jason Lee. This is based on the stochastic thermodynamics. So people try to calculate, is there any kind of similar trade of relations between the power and efficiency? Indeed, they, uh, they succeeded. Yeah, you see that this is only by one year later, after TUR was reported, they found so-called the power efficiency trade-off relation is expressed in this way. You see left side is the power, and right, right side is this, and theta by some kind of uh, system detail dependent constant. You see that if you go to eta goes to eta c, then the right hand side is becoming zero. That means w dot cannot be positive finite. So they, <coughs> they conclude that probably there is no dream engine, not in the linear response regime and whatever, in general uh, framework. But their calculation based on some kind of Hamiltonian systems. So it is not real general, general all, all different type of uh, non-equilibrium systems. So later on, the same site, same Zypot, using the his uncertainty relation and derive this kind of trade of relation. It's the same thing, but only the coefficient is a little bit different. This coefficient is basically work fluctuation rate. If this is not diverging, usually not diverging, then this is finite. So again, you cannot have a dream engine. However, uh, I think you learned last week this TUR, standard TUR only satisfied only for the overdamped systems. But in the same year, a little later, another group, De Chant and Sasa, derived much simpler looking trade of relation, which is given by this. The chi is also some kind of constant depending on the details of the system using not TUR, but another kind of trade of relation is so-called entropic bound on currents. So when eta was eta C, this is also, you cannot have a <coughs> finite positive power. This system is basically can be applied to the, uh, this result can be applied to the underdamped, <coughs> general underdamped and overdamped long Jebang dynamics, even with magnetic field. So story must be closed, you know, the, because they found even magnetic field, you cannot have a dream engine. But the problem is, then what is the, this, uh, uh, these guys' result about uh, Benenti and Saito and Kasati, magnetic field is on, then you can have uh, Onsaga, Onsaga coefficient can, not, can, can be possibly asymmetric. And some people found in the complicated structure you have, uh, you have uh, uh, really uh, Onsaga symmetry is broken. Then what is the, so basically two results are not consistent with each other. 
So what is the problem? So this is the question we are asking. Two terminal heat engine, because three terminal, we know that your entropy zero entropy production rate cannot be reached. Still, we are looking at two terminal engine with broken on symmetry. So is it impossible? That's the one possibility, but or maybe it's possible. So dream engine can be really there because their, their calculation is also only applied to the this kind of continuum dynamics with the magnetic field. So you may have something else. Or this is still possible, broken on symmetry possible, but no, dream engine is not be realized due to some other reasons. So that's the question you are trying to answer <coughs> in our paper, and I'm trying to answer to you today. Answer is, of course, this. So the conclusion is, unfortunately, you cannot have a dream engine, whatever you do. But there is some other ways. So we are only talking about the magnetic field here. OK, let's go. And so in you know, order to show that we are going into the exactly solvable model, which is, you know, if, you every, if something is nonlinear, you cannot solve in general. So you go to the linear Brownian particle engine, so-called. It's under the system, V is a velocity vector. And this is linear potential, harmonic potential, K is whatever, stiffness matrix in general. You can have a non-conservative force like a torque in the inside of the system, a magnetic field, Lorentz force, and if, well, friction term is gamma is friction matrix, and psi is noise, and noise can be noise, uh, noise for the each component of velocity vector, or you can think about the each component of velocity vector as a, a velocity for the uh, for a, for a given particle. Well, V1 is, you can think of, about Vx, V2 is Vy, but also you can think about V1 is first particle velocity, and V2 is second particle velocity. But anyway, they are in a different, different temperature. You know, the, you know to make a two terminal engine, you, ha you have to have a temperature gradient. Okay, this is a simple system uh, because even, even, even though this is linear, it's difficult to solve. So we go to the most simple system, two particle system or the two dimensional system. So you have uh, X1 and X2, one is T1 and one is T2. One particle is here, the other particle is here. Then this particle is only doing the one dimensional motion and they are all inside of this uh, harmonic potential or harmonically interacting, whatever. So I'm thinking about this kind of system. So in more concretely, is K is given by this. Uh, Non-conservative force is asymmetric uh, off diagonal element is uh, uh, generating a torque. And B field is, of course, Lorentz force. And this patient is just taking a sim uh, simple identity matrix. You will solve this. Well, I'm not going to show you the derivation, but you need stochastic thermodynamics tools or technique to calculate the heat and all that in this calculation. So unfortunately, you learn all these stochastic thermodynamics tools last week. So you can do that by yourself. This is exactly solvable. And we know that this guy, one saga Casimir symmetry must be satisfied. Well, unfortunately, this is even function only. So one saga symmetry is restored, even with the magnetic field, as I advertised in the, in the previous page. So no dream engine at all. Then well, one of the, my poster got an idea. 
go to the three dimension. But I know that at the beginning, if you go to the three dimension, it's, it's going to be a three dimensional, three terminal problem. Then, you know, they, again, you're going to go back to the same problem uh, as in the linear irreversible thermodynamics framework. However, there is a way to escape out of the, uh, that problem. We take three dimension or uh, Stephanie coefficient the same, and this is torque. So basically, one, two, three dimension. Torque is around this way, the magnetic field in general. But main thing is we take this gamma only two dimensional. The one guy is zero. And I'll take the, this uh, uh, temperature matrix T1 is zero. What that means? What that means is this. This second particle is here, third particle here, but first particle is outside of a reservoir because first particle is not connected to this uh, because this is zero and T1 is zero, it is basically deterministic. So you have two terminals still and three particle system. Is it clear? Yeah. No? No, you have a third terminal that is just cut. Cut the link to the third terminal means third, third reservoir. Yeah. System is one, two, three particle. Okay? So this, this means this first, first particle, system is composed of three particle, but this guy is connected to the low temperature, this guy is connected to high temperature, but this guy is, is outside of two reservoir. Okay? Then terminal means reservoirs, connection. Okay? So we, this is the situation, and we try to solve this thing analytically. It's horrible calculation. You do three by three, exactly solvable. We, we succeeded in that, and I'll show the one coefficient. For general B is too much complicated, so we take the Bx equals zero. Then we calculate L1, 2, L2, 1. This is off diagonal element of on the matrix. It's looking horrible. And this is inside of here, the C is, C is also given by that. But if you look at really carefully, then uh, this C is all even function in B. So this C is all even function. Only thing is, oops, only thing is you have this guy and that guy. You see that this is just minus sign each other. This is the other all the function, so it is also uh, what uh, Casimir symmetry is, is conserved here, but also the symmetry is broken. This guy is different from that guy because of this BZ component. Okay, so we found two terminal engine, and also the symmetry is broken. Then what do you expect? Benetti, Saito, and uh, Kasati theory in the linear irreversible thermodynamics, you can have a dream engine. You can have a finite power with, with current efficiency. On the other hand, then what about Dechen de Sasa? He said his derivation is also very simple. <clears throat> he showed the under the that even with the magnetic field, power should be given by this, so the remaining is impossible. So these two theories uh, contradict each other. What is the problem? It's a very simple problem. It's the stability of the steady state. 
even though the k here is positive definite, torque force is there, is still okay with, with torque force solely, but you have a Lorentz force here. They combine each other. Sometimes system can get out of the stable steady state, which has been known. The, 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 this kind of stability has been known uh, only two or three years ago. People thought oh, B field doesn't do nothing, so you, you have always a stable Boltzmann distribution. But as soon as you add the torque, B field is, is a combinational effect on the system, and system can be out of the stable non equilibrium steady state. Linear uh, universal thermodynamics, they do not think about the you know, the stable steady state or unstable steady state. They just think about, okay, you have, assume there is a steady state, stable, then there is going on. Okay? So we checked the stability of this thing. In some cases, analytically, some cases, it's too, too complicated. We go, go into the numerical uh, test to find out the stability analysis stability region. You see coming back to the first page of this guy, this eta, eta C, W dot is positive along this line. We, and of course in, in our system, S is once our symmetry is broken, so you are somewhere here. So you wanna go there, then what do you expect? Where is the stable region? Remarkably, it's all unstable. And stable, on S equal one, this stable region going up to reach the top uh, plateau. No other reasons going in. So, controversy between the, this uh, existence of dream engine of this or walls from the Onsaga symmetry and all that is not really a controversy if you cons we consider the stability condition. If stability condition is there, then there is an extra con constraint, then you're gonna have uh, no dream engine is possible. How much time? Yeah, I'm good. This is my last, last page. So th this was the question you are asking at the beginning. Answer is this. Two terminal heat engine with broken on saga symmetry can be realized. However, stability requirement make the dream engine realized. Make dream engine not realized, impossible. That's our result. And this trade-off relation between power and efficiency by especially Dechen and Sasa is working. It's really a uh, solid uh, result, even with magnetic field. So impossible. But there is a way. We know we, what, what we learned. You know, to break the uh, Onsaga symmetry, which is gonna basically uh, uh, prohibit the dream engine, you can use some other non-magnetic field. So you use some other, you know, the external force to break the time reverse asymmetry, then you may have a uh, dream engine. So one, one example is velocity dependent force, the broken, of course, if the time of assessment is break, broken, which can be realized by active reservoir, which is very popular, I guess maybe next speaker wanna talk about it. And CC force cooling in the plasmas, cold damping, many where 
and phenomenological velocity dependent force is really present. So in there, if you use that kind of things, you can uh, realize the dream engine possible. Also, uh, the change in Sasa's result about uh, this power efficient trade-off is only for the underdamped Langjiabang dynamics with white noise. So you can have a uh, non-Markovian noise. Basically, this active reservoir is also considered as a non-Markovian reservoir. Memory, or the, nobody will look at the discrete dynamics. We don't know whether there the dream engine is possible or not. That's the still open question. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? So how, how would you define the dream engine for discrete dynamics? Cardinal efficiency or the maximum efficiency with finite power. With finite power. But the, I mean, it would stay at the delta w over delta s state, right? There's no w dot and s dot. No, s dot, s dot can be zero. If s dot is zero, then you, you have a, a cardinal efficiency. The double that is finite. Discrete system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what How I'm come I know? I don't know about the discrete system. We 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 try for the. You know the quantum heat engine problem is basically because the state is discrete in the system. You can think about discrete jumping system. Uh, but that's an example. Example-wise, we solve the you, ca uh, you cannot find a dream engine. However, there is no general proof like a Dechen Sasa for the continuous dynamics. That's the only thing I say. If you go to the book, real quantum system, coherence factor also change a lot. So cardinal efficiency can be overcome. Um, so that's all, all different problems for the quantum case. Another question? So you've been only talking about the um, steady state autonomous heat engine. So is there still not possible for the um, periodic uh, heat engine? A cyclic engine. Yeah. 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 Cyclic engine is also can be included by in the Dechen Sasa formulation. So even in the cyclic engine, you know the at least if, if you follow the Dechen Sasa, you cannot have a dream engine. Uh, maybe I missed it in the three particle system. How this temperature was zero in the particle one? Are we set to zero? For example, by by extra reservoir or something? You know, you have particles interacting each other, then these particles inside the one reservoir. Yeah, that was T one and T two. T one and T two, and but they are but thermally so connected. These two particles. Yeah, and the particle in the in the in the middle middle can have t1 minus t2 kind of i don't know no he can interact but this guy does not inside of the reservoir it's something like it's a very simple form of of well, heat transport in the long chain one one end particle is in the reservoir t1 the other, the other end you have a t2 but all the other particle between is not in the reservoir. The temperature is zero of that particle. Yeah, we set the temperature is zero because it is outside. Temperature zero is nothing but that there is no interaction between the, there is no in, interaction between the stochastic reservoir. That's all. Okay. So, Other questions? Only thing because uh, uh, just one one mention is because this is this is life science workshop. I did not nothing about the life here. 
I think Professor Hyun already talked about a lot of life. But heat engine is, can be connected to the biological engine you know, the, in many ways, especially information engine. Uh, Dr. Saga talked about the last week. A virus is sensing, so taking information and going to the, that direction type of information engine. But the information engine genetically can be converted to the heat engine. One ton mapping is possible. So if you learn something about the heat engine, then you can also learn about the information engine. Through that bridge, you can reach the life science. Okay. Okay. Let's thank Professor Park.